Governor Mike Dunleavy's advisor on pro-family policies has resigned after controversial comments he made on his podcast came to light. It was Nat Hers with Alaska Public Media who published the report yesterday in partnership with American Public Media. And Nat joins us now in studio. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks T for having me. Tell us about what Jeremy Kubas, um, what, what his role was within the Dunleavy administration. Yeah, so Kubis was hired a little more than a year ago. He actually was originally hired as a photographer. He said he applied through normal channels, although we know that he went to the same church as the governor in Wasilla. Um, he was initially, you know, he took photos, he helped set up AV equipment at news conferences. And then uh, about a month ago, kind of coinciding with a, a push by the governor into more conservative social issues, not something that he really focused on in his first term, uh, he promoted uh, Mr. Kubis into this position as pro-family advisor, where, as far as we know, he, he gave a speech or speeches to a conservative group, but really, he was uh, mainly tasked with developing a pro-family website, which still has not been published. Ned, your reporting includes a number of quotes from Kubis oh, from a podcast that he runs. What were those comments that garnered your attention and concern? Well, I just got a tip that I should listen to this podcast. So I started listening to it. And the first thing that kind of popped up for me was uh, there was a podcast where they were talking about transgender activists. And Kubis and his co-host were calling basically for violence against transgender activists. And that prompted us to look a little more deeply into this huge body of work in this podcast, like uh, dozens and dozens of episodes, hours apiece. And there were the, 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 the kind of the worst thing we heard was where Mr. Kubis said that divorce from a moral perspective is actually worse than rape and that once you're married, uh, rape no longer exists because if you have signed the marriage contract, you're consenting for the rest of time. Uh, there, was also, there were also some comments that were sympathetic to Adolf Hitler. Uh, Mr. Kubis used the N-word and uh, it, there, it, 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 it keeps going. So now, uh, today, Kubis appeared to have posted a video response on social media in which he uses profane slurs and says he will not apologize. Did he tell you the same thing when you interviewed him for this? Yeah, I did not expect Mr. Kubis to answer my phone call. He called me back and spent 50 minutes on the phone with me, essentially saying, I stand behind everything I said on this podcast. He said, uh, you know, I'm not going to apologize for any of this and, and you know, repeated basically the, the same thing today. And I, I, I think it's, you know, the message has been not that the reporting is wrong, but uh, that I'm going to stand behind everything that I've said here. All right. Nat Hers with Alaska Public Media. Thank you so much for your in-depth reporting and for joining us tonight. And our viewers can find your full story on alaskapublic.org. Thanks again. And we did reach out to Governor Mike Dunleavy's office today for comment, and this statement was provided by the governor's deputy communications director, Jeff Turner. Quote, Governor Dunleavy sincerely believes that the differences between people are what makes us all stronger. The governor represents all Alaskans regardless of their faith, ethnicity, race, sexual orientation, or gender. Derogatory statements about individuals and groups within our society do not in any way reflect the values of Governor Dunleavy or his administration and will not be tolerated. We also asked the governor's office about the hiring practices used for his staff and who vets applicants and whether social media or background checks are part of that process. Turner says the state uses a, quote, standardized process for recruiting exempt employees, end quote, and referred us to the state labor department's website, which posts job openings, but the site does not outline any specific vetting requirements for applicants. We'll be right back.